<clears throat> so that is correct bravery. Again, uh, you have to understand we're not talking about bravery within the within a generic context. We're not talking about bravery within a modern 21st century American warfighter. We're not talking about correct bravery within a 1600s bushi. We're talking about correct bravery for Shinobi no Mono. Now we can argue about the possible timelessness of that correct bravery or we could argue possibly the context of the timeline. In other words, does correct bravery change for Shinobi based on the year? or the or the culture or society or whatever you know that is not for this commentary though that argument is valid but is not for this commentary for this commentary this is what the author this is what nojiri intended was correct bravery means calm and relaxed mind that is also very actively clever under the most intensely dangerous situation uh, it goes hand in hand even with the kanji you know the whole idea about the knife you know people also said the knife above the heart it's that same kind of idea uh, a lot of people don't know that the knife above the heart also in some instances is conceived as knife in the heart so like even though the knife is in the heart the heart still beats keeps beating that same idea is that even under the most dangerous circumstances you continue to function and for the shinobi to continue to function means he remains calm, cool, in his stays in character, and cleverly comes up with a solution. So then, when uh, the guy, oh, you know, this I think this guy's a spy, and then you remain calm, stay in character, and you have a silver tongue, and you talk your way out of that situation, right? That is correct bravery. Brute courage would be like. You're found out, you break character, you flip the table over, and you start killing people and fighting people. Like, so that one is, it is rejected. <laughs> so, now we move on. There's, of course, so much more that can be said about this. But again, you know, I talk for so long, so many people are tired of listening to me talk. So, I'm going to move on. <laughs> uh, the next part in their translation says... This means that a little cowardice and caution should be applied and used as a medicine for ease. Again, I wouldn't use I wouldn't use the word cowardice because it doesn't the feeling doesn't isn't a, I don't believe is appropriate. What it's trying to say is uh, is caution, and it's like an intelligent sense of danger. It's not like bitch ass cowardice. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's not like bitching up coward. It means uh, you're just you're careful, you're cautious, you're not. You're not. Uh, uh, I'm sure that you know you guys listening are feeling what I'm trying to say. I can't seem to find the right word in English, which is probably maybe why they use the word cowardice because they just couldn't find the right word. Um, you're not a coward in the English connotation. You're not like a little a little bitch. It's not like that. But what it means is it's just you're cautious and you're reasonably suspicious of danger, you know. <laughs> and so if you if you are reasonably suspicious or re reasonably aware of the danger, you won't use brute courage because you really perceive the danger. And so when you really perceive the danger, really like feeling and understanding the danger will help keep you on track with the correct bravery and will help keep you from, in, from using brute courage. And it says used as a medicine for ease. Uh, and a, a, it, a healthy, correct awareness of the danger is like a medicine to ease your mind. Your mind will not get agitated. Your mind will not blow up into a rage of brute courage. You're, it, it's like medicine to smooth that out, ease that out. You will stay calm. You will stay relaxed. When you really understand the depth of the danger that you are in, you will chill the hell out. 
and you will use your calm and clever mind to get out of a situation, you will not attempt to attack it. In other words, like, you know, you're, uh, you're this tiny little person in this big, scary world. You're not going to just run and attack things and get killed quickly. You're going to be like, okay, I'm small. They're big. They're deadly. I'm not. I'm going to be clever. That sense of just being honest about the truth, knowing your own mortality, knowing the limitations of your abilities, knowing that if you try this, you will not succeed and you will be killed. Being honest about that is the medicine that will ease your mind to be calm and clever in a dangerous situation. <coughs> so the next sentence in their translation says, when these skills have been mastered, uh, in addition to the above short set of principles, so the short set of principles uh, mentioned previously is the five constant factors, bravery, wisdom, uh, benevolence, uh, you know, and, and then the observing the enemy, the element of surprise, independence, and attacking the formless, you know, all those principles. When, th when, the, when the skills of Shinobi have been mastered in addition with the principles that have been listed. So you have the principles and then you have the actual techniques. When the techniques and the skills are mastered, when they are properly combined, your chi will be enhanced and your benefits will be acquired. Now, chi in this case requires an entire commentary of its own. I will try to sum this up quickly and you guys can, you know, go on further with your with further detailed commentary. Um, Anthony Cummins may make a video about, I don't know, uh, it, it's such a vast topic. It's impossible to just sort of spit it out in, you know, 15 minutes. The best thing that I can tell you right now is that there's two things you need to sort of remember. And that is that uh, chi, or in this case, you know, what do you say, chi or ki, whatever. Uh, ki, chi, prana, whichever, right? It is the, the wind, it's the flow of energy. It has two aspects. First off, the the first thing you need to know is the stronger and more vibrant your chi is then the the better you perform right you're healthier your mind is sharper you're more present you're alert uh if if you if you strengthen your chi then meditation becomes easy or if you meditate properly it'll strengthen your chi there's a relationship between the clarity of your mind and your chi level Right. Even uh, whatever, you know, even even old fat guys can be smart and, and spry on their feet if their chi is strong. So even though they may be fat and old or like old and wrinkled, they still have this vitality about them. Their mind is so sharp and they're still spry because their chi is so strong. Your chi is like a uh, it's like your consciousness is present in your body and the connections between your consciousness and your body is your chi right so the stronger that the flow and the connections are then the more that the mind and the body can sort of harmonize also your own virtue and non-virtue positive karma and negative karma also sort of in so many ways flow with your chi when your chi is sort of uh, muddied then it's more apt to sort of uh, engage with negativity like negative emotions depression sadness anger jealousy when the chi is healthy and vibrant you're focused more on you know compassion and equality and peaceful abiding Chi will also, uh, basically, in, in a real simple way, you can say, like, good luck. When your chi is low, you're more apt to suffer your bad luck. And when your chi is good and vibrant, you're more apt to have good luck. 
when your chi is very low, you are more susceptible to be victimized, to be attacked and assaulted, and to be a victim of ghost and negative spirits. And when your chi is strong, you're more apt to be able to interact and engage with gods and higher beings. So strong chi tends to uh, tends to push away evil spirits, negative spirits, tormented spirits. Whereas if you have weak chi then tormented spirits are able to sort of suck your suck your life essence, give you nightmares, bring you insanity, all kinds of bad things, right? So, in a, you really, in other words, the the better your chi is, right? This the overall more successful and happier and present and clear you are. So what this is saying in so many ways, and so when it says your your chi will be enhanced and your benefits will be acquired, in so many ways it's just saying that you will you will it brings success right so success for nin for shinobi no jutsu in order to have this great level of success where your chi is enhanced and you have all these benefits you must master the principles and you must master the techniques if you don't master the techniques and principles you will not get this benefit right and remember you can't master the principles and the skills if you if you don't have, uh, for example, if you dabble in the wondrous things, the Myo, too early, right? If you lose Hon Shin, you can never master the principles and you can never master the skills. So therefore, no Hon Shin means no mastery of skills, no mastery of principles equals no enhancement of Chi equals no benefit. Boom, flat out. Another thing to say about chi is uh, something that is very overlooked in the West. Um, chi also means just your awareness, your attention. So therefore, you will see like in the Kusunoki manuals, it says how to move in the night without uh, attracting the chi of the enemy. What that literally means is how to move in a way that doesn't cause the enemy's mind to snap on to you, right? Chi in this sense means the directed attention. So in, so directed intention can also mean chi. Chi can also mean the attention. Uh, in that case, your chi will be enhanced basically means your, your ability to pay attention will be enhanced. So not only do you have all of the good benefits I discussed earlier, but also overall your ability to pay attention and to snap on to targets and snap on to, to things will be enhanced. <coughs> the next line says, To defeat an army, contemplate and use the established path. To obstruct the enemy's plans is an excellent military skill, and there are countless cases of this from older times. Now, my translation, my personal translation of this is different. It's not different in the sense that this isn't correct. Like I said, <coughs> just um, in the original text, it is a list. And it's not clear if, the, if it's meant to be a list or if it's meant to be a series of sentences. Because they're not listed sideways. It's just a series of kanji that follow each other. It they flow like a sentence but there's not really any grammar so Anthony and Yoshi have decided to string them together to make a sentence I on the other hand believe that it's a list but I won't go into again I won't go too deep into my interpretation because again we've I've decided I'm going to for these for these uh, files that I'm going to use their translation so in their translation to defeat an army, contemplate and use the established path. To obstruct the enemy's plans is an excellent military skill, and there are countless cases of this from older times. It's pretty straightforward They're in their version. To defeat an army, because that's what shinobi do, all right? Let's not sugarcoat this. Shinobi is about bringing your enemy down. You may not be shooting him with arrows and attacking him with spears. You know, you're not invading his castle with a thousand, two, ten thousand armed Ashigaru, but you are still attacking and defeating an opposing force. So to defeat an army it means that whether you are, 
you know, a soul, whether you are in a time of war or whether it's a time of peace and your Lord has hired you to take measures to defeat an organization like during the Edo period, the daimyo would have their shinobi do things in order to fight the merchant guilds because the merchant guilds were like criminal, almost criminal. In many cases, they were criminal organizations within the daimyo's uh, province. And the problem is, is during the Tokugawa, during the Edo period, uh, the Tokugawa shogunate was extremely unforgiving to daimyo who weren't able to control their merchant guilds. They considered them unfit to rule. So many daimyo would send their shinobi to actually combat covert warfare, the merchant guilds. So whether you're defeating an actual army or you're defeating a merchant guild or you're or for whatever reason, you're still you are going to war. You are attacking an opposing force. And your goal is to defeat them, to bring them down is your goal. So to defeat an army, contemplate and use the established path. Well, contemplate and use the established path is pretty straightforward. Contemplate and use the established path. Contemplate means to um, always be just, you know, th the word is contemplate, right? So contemplate, train on it, meditate on it, follow it in the view, philosophize about it, and then use the established path means don't try to recreate the wheel. Just do what the successful shinobi of the past have done. Follow the established path. Have faith in the tradition. Have faith in the methodology. And then the next part, to obstruct the enemy's plans, is an excellent military skill. There's not a whole lot to say about that. It's an excellent skill for warriors to be able to obstruct the enemy's plan. So the enemy has a plan, and then you come in and you just block it. Right? They have this gigantic scheme and you come through and just pull the kingpin out and the whole scheme falls down around them. That's an excellent skill. And of course, there are countless cases of this from older times. Japanese history is filled with shinobi that have succeeded. It's the entire reason why I wrote the book In Praise of Spies. In Praise of the Spies, because Japanese history has completely been altered the course of Japanese history has been altered and guided by these successful spies. <coughs> All right, so in their translation, the next sentence says, Obtaining benefits or obtaining victory through attacking is not a way of excellence. However, if it is not possible to obstruct the enemy's plans, you need to attack. Uh... Mm, Again, I won't go into too much of my own commentary. If you're flat out, obtaining victory through attacking is not a way of excellence. This is also echoed in the art of war, in the chapter about spies. You know, it costs so much money, uh, not just money, it costs so many lives. The amount of money spent, the amount of lives lost, the amount of children left fatherless, the amount of wives left without a husband, the amount of... The, the 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 cost of war is not just the cost of weapons but it is the human terrain that is damaged so financially there's loss human there's loss society sociologically there's loss there's so many there's so much cost and sacrifice that comes with engaging in a war that obtaining Victory through attacking in this way is not a way of excellence. The, Nojiri is saying that, and Sun Tzu said that. It is, it is the, you don't want to go to war because it costs so many, it, again, the human, the human cost, the financial cost, the sociological costs are so high. Even if you win, you still took a serious loss. So, therefore, you want to use spies. Like in Sun Tzu, you know, it says, if for, the leader, for the ruler who does not use spies, that is the pinnacle of inhumanity. Because if you can use spies to obstruct and deconstruct and collapse the enemy's plans and the enemy's momentum and the enemy's ability to fight you, that is the best way. 
if you uh, but you know if if you can't like if it if that just doesn't work out then you're forced to go to war anyway that's sad that happens but that's the principle that's the ideal goal we're trying to stop the enemy before the enemy can even really do anything we want to control the enemy we want to have a network of spies inside the enemy's ranks and territory that whenever they try to move they're pinned in place that's the idea we don't actually ever want to go to war with anybody we want to just have them pinned in place that is the pinnacle that's what we're going for <clears throat> uh mm. If you need to attack, actually, I am going to change this translation a little bit because I really don't, I really don't. So <coughs> I'm going to change it a little bit. Obtaining, attaining victory through attacking is not a way of excellence. However, if it is not possible to obstruct the enemy's plans and you need to attack, and here comes the next part, you can win a hundred battles out of a hundred battles if you utilize the principle of emptiness in this way the righteous mind well they say righteous mind but this is honshin again in this way the honshin will not be lost and the benefits will be obtained this is a this is a deep deep principle and I'm going to continue that on the next part.